Hey, good morning. Welcome. Come on in. Come to the Mighty Bread. Come to my kitchen. Sit at my table. Grab your coffee. I hope you have your coffee. I hope you have your coffee, your Bible, your journal. I'm Andy Lee. I'm glad you're here with me. We are studying the powerful scripture of Psalm 37, 25 this morning. Hey, Mary, good morning. Good to see you. Evelyn, I'm glad you could join me today. Hey, Debbie Johnson, good morning. Good to see y'all. Do you have your coffee? Hey, Stephanie, got my coffee. It may be a little cold by now, but I'm going to take a sip because we've got to take a sip of coffee. Ready? Ah. What would life be like without coffee? Got to have coffee in the morning. Okay. Kim Andrus, good morning. Sarah, good morning. Good to see you. Okay. <laughs> Are we ready to hold hands and to pray us up this morning? Janice, good to see you. My sister Venus, good morning. All right, here we go. I'm going to pray us up. You're driving, Will. Please keep your eyes on the road and don't watch me. Just listen. So we'll pray you up too. Hold my hands. Lord, we love you and praise you and worship you and glorify you. God, we want to be warriors and not warriors. God, we want to know your peace. We want to trust you in deeper ways. Lord, help us understand this scripture. Help us come to a deeper place of trusting. Help us become that strong soldier warrior that you have created us to be. We are part of the army of God. Use us in mighty ways. God, for all those who are watching today, help it go from their head to their heart. Help me speak and teach this. Holy Spirit, be with us today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Selena, good morning. Kim, good morning. Good to see you. Elaine, I'm glad you could join us this morning. All right. Are y'all ready? Let's just roll up our sleeves and get to work today. We are in Psalm 37, 25. So go with me, if you will. To Psalm 37, 25, and this is one of my favorite psalms. I just love it. So we're going to dig in deep today. Verse 25, I'm going to read that if you want to read it out loud with me. Hey, Deb, good morning. Good to see you today. Psalm 37, 25 says, I was young and now I am old. Yet I never, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. Amen. What a scripture to hold on to, to stand on when you're going through hard times. Heather, good morning. I'm going to read it again. Psalm 37, 25. I was young and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. I had a good friend years ago who told me that Psalm 37 was her psalm. I mean, she clung to it for years and years and years. When she was a single mom, but her kids were young, and, and there wasn't much money, and life was really hard, she said she clung to this verse, Psalm 37, 25, that her children would not be begging for bread, that she, that the righteous would not be forsaken, that God would take care of them, and that he did. He, she saw God's provision. They were on the Madden plan. They lived day by day by day, but God did provide for them as she clung to this verse. And so I love this verse, and, and as we look at it, that word righteous is in this verse, just like we had yesterday. Yesterday, our verse was Psalm 55, 22, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. So yesterday, I got on this tangent about righteous, and I think I, I want to continue talking about that a little bit today because that seems to be the key here, even in this verse in Psalm 37, 25, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. So who are the righteous? And I feel like I got on this 
this confusing tangent yesterday in the commentary. And so rather than reading a commentary, let's go to the scriptures. Hi, Linda. Good to see you too, Linda's who have joined. Good morning. I'm glad you're with us. Let's go to a scripture to find out who the righteous are or how we are righteous. So um, go with me to Romans 4. 1 through 8. If somebody wants to type that up, Venus, you can't because you're driving. So Romans 4, 1 through 8, we're going to go there today and we're going to read about who is righteous, what makes us righteous. And you guys probably know the answer, but I think we need to look at the scripture and stand on the scripture because so many other things can go through our head and we can hear these voices and, and thoughts that make us doubt and waver. Hi, Carla. Good morning. Good to see you. Thank you, Selena. So I'm in Romans 4, 1 through 8. Thank you, Stephanie. So I'm going to read that. Abraham justified by faith. What then should we say that Abraham, our forefather, discovered in this matter? If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. Verse 3, what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, or that word can be trusted, God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. I'm going to stop for a minute there. How? What made him righteous? It wasn't what he did. It wasn't that he was all holy and that he did all the law correctly. That wasn't what made him righteous. What made him righteous? It was trusting God, trusting God, believing the promise, keeping on, keeping on, even when it didn't look like anything was going to happen. Trusting God, even when he told him to sacrifice his son, trusting God that he was going to come through, that even if he did sacrifice him, that God would bring him back to life and that God would provide somehow. He trusted him and that's what made him righteous. So keep on reading. Now, when a man when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but an obligation, right? So if when you work and you get paid for it, it's an obligation that the person you're working for owes you. However, to the man who does not work but trusts God, who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited to him as righteous righteousness David says the same thing and this is so awesome I mean we're reading in the New Testament David was in the Old Testament in the Psalms he says the same thing when he speaks a blessedness of the man to whom God credits righteousness apart from works verse 7 blessed are they whose transgressions are forgiven whose sins are covered blessed is the man whose sin the Lord will never count against him because he trusts in God. So simple, simple. Let's just make this simple. Who are the righteous? The righteous are the ones who trust, who trust in God. Simple. That's all it is. That's what it is. The righteous are the one who trust in him. So why am I going through all this? Why am I but just harping on this over and over? Because I know in my own life, I've been so quick when things have gone wrong, when when things are hard, then we start questioning, is God mad at me? Have I done something wrong? Am I just this terrible sinner, right? We go, Don't we go down that path? I mean, I just think it's human nature. Don't know how much of it's the enemy and how much of it's our own thinking in the way we're just wired. I do think it's the number one tactic of the enemy of God to make us doubt that he loves us, to make us doubt that he has good things planned for us. He is the enemy. He was to kill, steal, and destroy, to kill our hope, to steal our faith, and to destroy our relationship with God. He wants us to doubt God's goodness and his love for us. Hey, Shelly, good morning. And so right away when bad things happen, we think, oh, I've been bad and God is punishing me, but that is not, that's not true. <laughs> we know that in this world, we're going to have trouble. Jesus said in this world, we're going to have trouble. He says before that, he says, I have 
told you these things. He's told this is John 16, 33. I've told you these things to give you peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I've overcome the world. He's told us this to give us peace in the trouble. If we trust him, if we trust Jesus, we're covered by that blood. And not only are we made whole and have the promise of heaven, but we can have confidence that he will carry us through and provide for us in those difficult, hard seasons. Which as long as we live on this earth, my friends, as long as we're in this skin, we're going to have those hard days. We're going to have those hard seasons. So go with me back to John, to not John, but to Psalm 37. Let's go back to our main Psalm. Psalm 37. Oh, well, let's go to the beginning of Psalm 37. I just love this whole Psalm. It's got me through many hard days too. He says in, in verse 1, do not fret because of evil men. This is David. It says of David. So David wrote this. David who knew what it was like for evil men to be chasing him and trying to kill him and maligning his name and all of that. Ugh, life was hard. And he was one of God's favorites. He was anointed by God to be king. Yet yeah, look at all that he went through during up to the kingship and then after the kingship too. Do not fret because of evil men or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. So don't worry. They're going to die. They're going to go away. <laughs> don't be envious of them or, or worry about it because they're human too. But verse 3, trust. Everybody say trust. You got that word? Trust. It's not a bad word. It's a really good word. Trust. Trust in the Lord. And the word Lord is a Yahweh. There is that sacred covenant name. The covenant God. The Kesed God. Who gives us loving kindness and mercy. Even if we can't give it back. Even if we can't hold up our part. He, his, he is a covenant God. So trust in Yahweh and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Hi, Frank Lewis. Good to see you this morning. I love these scriptures and for many years I stood on these scriptures. My life was good. It was just hard. It was just a hard season in my life. I was restless and a little unhappy and waiting for God just to, every day, get me through the day. But I learned to trust him in that hard season and stood on this psalm to trust him. And I think we can learn so much in, in this psalm to trust him and to do good. Get out there. Bless other people. It helps us. That's what I think it means by doing good. Go out there. Bless other people. If you can't get out there, give somebody a call. See how you can bless them today. I'm telling you've been thinking about them. Do I need to pray for you? Is there something I can do for you? So um, bless them. Do good. Go out. See, if you are strong and healthy enough, go to a homeless shelter and see what you can do. Get in a food line and help people. So do good. It really gets us out of ourselves and our own stuff that we're stuck in. So trust the Lord and do good. Hi, Ginger. Good to see you this morning. Trust in the Lord. Do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Now, this is interesting. The complete Jewish Bible um, translates this as settle in the land and feed on faithfulness. Settle in the land and feed on faithfulness. Now, what this means to me, dwell in the land, live in the land, live right where you are today. Not remember what was in the past, wishing you could have that, or wait until you get to the other side, you get to some other place where the grass always seems greener, but it's not because you get there and you have to mow it too. So don't don't wait to live. 
live where you are. One time, because we were military, we moved around a lot. We were going to live in a place in Augusta, Georgia for only six months because Mike was in uh, a school at the time, only six months. So I thought, yeah, I'm just going to hang out here for six months. I'm not going to get involved with anything because I'm going to move. Now, I did put pictures on my wall, but my friends, that's not what settling and dwelling, really, if you live someplace, I mean, really live someplace, you get involved. That was the most miserable six months of my life. Hey, Patricia, good morning, Janice, thank you. So, so I, I learned from that six month mistake, I was so miserable, I didn't get involved in my church, I mean, we went to church, but I didn't didn't attend small groups or um, teach anything like I usually do and love to do. I didn't get involved and I was miserable and I decided after that six months that I would never do that again. That I would always jump in and live right where I was and get involved in my community and get involved in my church as much as I could. My neighborhood, even your neighborhood, it doesn't even have to be the whole community, but to live be a blessing and to live right where you are. So trust in the Lord. Do good. Help others around you. Live where you are. Get involved. And it, and so settle settle on the land and feed on faithfulness. I think is is interesting that God was faithful. That God will be faithful as you live where you are. You know what? He was so faithful to me. Um, when I moved after that six months, I was so miserable and so lonely. And God was faithful to give me friends, to give me people who could relate with me, young mommies with little kids who I could walk with, go to Bible study with, that he gave me that he was faithful. As I was faithful to him and just living where he had me, he was faithful to get me through and to bless me in those days, not just to get me through, y'all. He blessed me, and I became stronger. We're going to talk about that in a minute too. So dwell in the land, delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Y'all, what does it mean to delight in something? Well, when you delight in something, it just, it gives you joy, right? It just gives you joy when you delight in something. You crave it. You just, you want to be around it. You want to be, be there with that person if you delight in them or whatever you delight in. It just brings you a smile. It brings you joy. Does the Lord do that for you? How do we cultivate that delight in Him? One way is, is worship. Um, but worship is not just in music and just in singing, even though that is really fun and I recommend it highly to make, to intentionally worship Him every day, whether you feel like it or not. Turn on some good music and sing it aloud. Lift up your hands. Do a little dance in the kitchen to delight in Him. But worshiping Him is in delighting in Him, is trusting Him, is obeying Him, is listening for Him. Delight. You know, if you delight in some somebody, you want to hear everything they have to say. You don't want to miss anything. You want to spend time with them, right? If you delight in something. So all of that encompasses, I think, what it means to delight in the Lord. Spend time with Him. Worship Him. Listen for Him. Listen to Him. Be in the Word. And He will give you the desires of your heart. I believe that as we spend that time with Him and delight in Him, our desires align with His desires Commit your way to the Lord, verse 5. Trust in Him, and He will do this. Look what He will do. He will make your righteousness shine like the dawn, the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord. Oh, somebody's not going to like this verse. Verse 7. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when men succeed in their ways. When they carry out their wicked schemes, refrain from anger. I'm in verse 8. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret. Do not worry. It only leads to evil. For evil men will be cut off at those who hope in the Lord 
will inherit the land. Okay, so what's that about inheriting the land? If you read through the Psalms and all through Psalm 37, it's all about inheriting the land. Well, inheriting the land, inheriting the promise that they were given, inheriting the inheritance. Inheritance was a big deal back in the day. I think now a lot of us don't have an inheritance that we're going to receive, but Inheritance is a big deal to God. And did you know that we are going to inherit the land? We're going to inherit the heavenly promised land. That is a promise to us. Go with me to Hebrews 12, verse 22. I've just been in the scripture a lot lately, and I'm not sure why, but God just keeps on bringing it to me. I keep on using it for teaching it for different classes. Uh, Tiffany says, that's me, be still. Yes, and I am so proud of you. You just keep on going, girl. You keep on worshiping. You keep on trusting, being still. And I'm, I'm praying for you. So, so Hebrews, Hebrews 12, go with me to 1222 to see what we are going to inherit, my friends. This is our inheritance. Those of us who are trusting in him, this is what we're going to inherit. That you have come to Mount Zion, to the heavenly Jerusalem, the city of the living God. You have come to, this is what we're coming to, listen to this, to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly. Can you imagine? Just, just, just take a minute to try to imagine what that's like. Thousands and thousands of angels in joyful assembly to the church of the firstborn. What in the world does it mean that we all are the firstborn? You know, we're so literal. I read that the other day and I was like, I don't get it. I don't understand. How can we be the firstborn? I thought Jesus was the firstborn. So, but we all are the firstborn. And what that means is the firstborn always received the inheritance always received the bigger inheritance the blessing that was always for the firstborn my friends it doesn't mean we're literally the firstborn it means we are of the firstborn and we will receive the inheritance and the blessing so you are coming to the church of the firstborn whose names are written in heaven you have come to God the judge of all men to the spirits of righteous men and women made perfect and to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant now there are all different covenants in the Bible and I need to go study the different covenants I think there's three don't hold me on that because I need to study it but I think we get stuck in thinking that we're still in the old covenants we are in this new covenant with Jesus we are so we're made perfect and we come to to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant into the sprinkled blood that speaks better a better word than the blood of Abel what in the world does that mean well Abel was the first one to die Cain and Abel remember them and Cain killed Abel because he was mad because Abel had the better sacrifice and so his was the first blood shed and it didn't do anything. The rest of us just kept on dying. But Jesus, when he died, he was resurrected. So he was the last one. And because of his death and resurrection, we all live. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them. Okay, so this, this is going back to the Old Testament. I'm going to skip down to 28 because it gets confusing. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. And what is that consuming fire? He's a purifying God. He purifies us. He makes us shiny. He makes us whole. He makes us complete. And we, my friends, will one day receive this inheritance, this heavenly kingdom that can never be shaken, that can never be destroyed. Mm. That is the promise. So we go back to Psalm 37. Who are the righteous? The righteous are those who trust in God. Oh, and I'm, we know, we've talked about how hard this can be. Help me trust you. 
Help me trust you. God gives us that peace as we trust him, but he cannot give us peace. And I believe many times cannot work in our lives as long as we're trying to do it. We've got to wait, be still. We've got to listen. What do I do? And what are you going to do, Lord, as we trust in him? Well, I'm going to close this morning with some um, a devotion by Streams in the Desert. Not by, but in Streams in the Desert. This is an old, old devotional that is that has made it through the years. It is just paramount. It's deep. So hold on. We're going to read this morning. Mary and Martha could not understand what the Lord was doing. Now, do you remember Mary and Martha and Lazarus and how Lazarus died and Jesus didn't come back to save him? He died and then Jesus came? So, Mary and Martha could not understand what their Lord was doing. Each of them had said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And behind their words, we seem to read their true thoughts. Lord, we do not understand why you waited so long to come or how you could allow the man you love so much to die. We do not understand how you could allow so much sorrow and suffering to devastate our hearts when your presence might have stopped it all. Why didn't you come? Now it's too late because Lazarus has been dead for four days. But Jesus simply had one great truth in answer to all of this. He said, in essence, you may not understand, but I am telling you that if you believe, you will see. Abraham could not understand why God would ask him to sacrifice his son. He loved so much, but he trusted him. Then he saw the Lord's glory when his son he loved was restored to him. Moses could not understand why God would require him to stay 40 years in the wilderness, but he also trusted him. And then he saw when God called them to lead Israel from Egypt, from, from the Egyptian bondage. Joseph could not understand his brother's cruelty toward him, the false testimony of a treacherous woman, or the long years of unjust imprisonment, but he trusted God, and finally he saw his glory in it all. And Joseph's father, Jacob, could not understand how God, um, how he could, Oh, I lost it. And just as Father Jacob could not understand how God's strange providence could allow Joseph to be taken from him. Yet later he saw the Lord's glory when he looked into the face of his son, who had become the governor for a great king and the person used to preserve his own life and the life of an entire nation. Perhaps there is also something in your life causing you to question God. Do you find yourself saying, I don't understand why God allowed my loved one to be taken away. I don't understand why affliction has been permitted to strike me over and over. I don't understand why the Lord has led me down these twisting paths. I don't understand why my own plans, which seem so good, have been so disappointing. I don't understand why the blessings I so desperately need are so long in coming. Dear friend, you do not have to understand all God's ways of dealing with you. He does not expect you to understand them. You do not expect your children to understand everything you do. You simply want them to trust you. And someday, you too will see the glory of God in the things you do not understand. You know, sometimes bad things happen simply because we live on this planet where there is trouble. Sometimes bad things happen because we've made some wrong decisions and some wrong choices. Sometimes bad things happen simply maybe because God has allowed some discipline in our life. But always, always, these things can be used for the glory of God. They can be used to help us see his, his faithfulness, that he is with us. He promises 
I am faithful even when they are faithless. He has to be who he is, and God is good, and he is one who we can trust. Our, lastly, Psalm 37, 25, one more time. I was young, and now I am old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. Amen and amen. Hold my hands. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this word. Thank you that you are, you are good. You are working toward good for us, Lord. Help us trust you in these hard seasons. Lord, I, I pray that we can have ears to hear um, what we would do, what our part would be, and, and to wait and be still and trust when you tell us to do so because you're working things out what your part is and what our part is. Lord, help us trust and know that as we trust you, we are righteous with you. As we trust you, you provide. As we trust you, you give us, you're able to give us the peace that passes understanding. Thank you, Jesus, for this word. Thank you, God, that you are faithful to the righteous. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much. Can y'all believe tomorrow is Friday? We get to do the happy dance tomorrow, the Friday dance tomorrow. So we'll be in Psalm 20, verse 7 tomorrow. Go to Andy Lee, words by, <laughs> wordsbyandylee.com. You can get the printable for this week. You can also look at the YouTube channel page and click on that link and subscribe so if you miss this time together you'll get it in your email box and you can watch it there y'all have a great day love you go out there be a threat to the enemy see you tomorrow bye